Hello, one and all, we are back to This is the President after a pretty lengthy break at Camp David. Uh, I was trying to remember where we were at and we are, we're kind of screwed. <laughs> we're at 50, just about 60% approval rating. 5.5 million. Uh, two of our employees won't work for us because our approval rating is so low. I was looking at our administration. There's not really much we can do to improve our approval rating. So we're just going to stick with gaining cash for now and hope that we can hire some new people that can help us out with our approval rating. Uh, I don't know how we're going to manage to do this month, but let's take a look at Save the Journalist. Uh, we might have read it before, but I'd like to check it again. Oh, this is a traveling one. Okay. Raul Tancheran says, Chairman, uh, the Chairman of the Association of Journalists says, Mr. President, I'm asking you to rescue Aaron Hoppy, an investigative journalist. A few years ago, he went to the Philippines to inquire into the local arms trade and got imprisoned. The Philippine authorities and our intelligence agencies have been playing the blame game ever since, going out of their way not to do anything. I think the agencies are doing it on purpose. Aaron was a thorn in their side, just like Will Trich. Had been. Will Church was actually a good employee, so maybe we can get this guy. I'm breaching the professional ethics here, but you should know shortly before his departure, Aaron said he had evidence that would make a few men from the Ministry of Defense and the Philippines government answer some very tough questions. Unfortunately, only Aaron knows the truth, and it would take a heavily armed military squad to get him out of there. But you're the president. Surely you have one of those at your disposal. Yeah, no. <laughs> Organized negotiations. Julian Gillard, the Secretary of State, says, Sir, I was recently contacted by Busan Buji, the leaders of rebels in Cameroon. They have been controlling the south of the country for over a year now, including the region with the richest crude oil deposits. Miraculously, Himaju's ragtag bunch of misfits not only managed to secure the oil rigs, they even set up a gasoline refinery. Except they have no means to transport their product and no buyers. That's where we come into play. The enterprising young man asked me to help him find customers. I remembered about one rather specific organization in Egypt that could handle logistics for Maju. But there is a problem. Neither side in this arrangement is recognized by any of the world's powers, so it may be difficult to come to an agreement. We cannot act in the open, and the situation is further complicated by the fact that Maju can only speak Cameroonian pidgin. If you can arrange negotiations in complete secrecy, the interest from the transaction will go to your charity foundation. Such an undertaking requires the help of a professional diplomat who speaks several languages, as well as security experts who will guarantee confidentiality. Uh, so, uh, maybe not. Maybe later. Well, we're going to have to get passports for people, that's for sure. So... Professional diplomat. None of, none of the people I have, like maybe Clint? Not really a professional diplomat though. Maybe Sasha? But she, and she has a passport, but she's not working for it. All right, reassemble the fan club. Trevor McKay, major league president. Mr. President, not a single game went by without an incident since Pierce Clayton became the head of the New York Coyotes fan club. He's a dyed-in-the-wool fanatic. He thinks Coyotes are gods, and other teams and their fans are infidels, who must be destroyed both on the pitch and in the stands. Clayton's bigotry and aggression are infectious. Now the entire fan club storms sports arenas with waving baseball bats and shouting obscenities. They keep provoking fights, and Coyotes risk getting kicked out of the league unless we interfere. Not to mention the club exists under your patronage, and the behavior of rowdy fans tarnishes your reputation. This guy should be relieved from his position as the head of the fan club. But this can only be done by its members, which is why I suggest we frame Clayton and turn the aggression he instilled into his followers against him. How about we put a different team's paraphernalia into his personal belongings, or photoshop him into a picture of fans cheering for Indian wolves? We must get rid of him, whatever it takes. Maybe Andres? Or Ben? Ben would be good, I think, for this. 
trolling on the internet as well. I think any any of those three might be good. Just personal belongings. Let's try Ben. Chief, do you mind if I add myself as a friend of the First Lady? No? Sir, after working with Clint on an assignment, I realized he was a real idiot. Guys like that have no business working in the President's office. Why don't you sign the order to fire him? No! He's like the only one that's left from the original team. Oh man, I'm gonna lose everybody. This game's freaking hard. Develop new legislation on robotics. Oh man, three people. Barbara Goosens, executive director at Jules Carr. Mr. President, I spent half of my life trying to make our country and the entire world cleaner, safer and better. But the real problem started after I began to succeed. People are afraid of robots. They blame machines for their own faults. And the bigger progress we make, the more insane and medieval the technophobes' demands become. There's no stopping progress, but you can disarm social tension. Campbell and Asimov came up with the laws of robotics 80 years ago, exactly, to alleviate people's fear of progress. The time has come to dust them off, adapt to modern reality, and introduce them into the legal system. I'm ready to help to do, uh, help to the best of my ability, but I am going to need someone inherently familiar with lawmaking. And we won't make progress without an expert who understands the principles of AI programming. I'd like someone responsible for the ethical side of the issue, too. I realize that can be partial to my favorite creation and deaf to the concerns of regular folks. Do you by any chance have a robot fan on your team? I promise this project will make history. So Clint and Andre should be good for that. Rating software. Just want to see if there's anyone that's a fan of of robots. I think Clint, Andres, and maybe maybe this is the time to hire someone on. The thing is, they're so freaking expensive. Look at this: four mil, two mil, plus another three hundred fifty-eight thousand a month. And a lawyer. Um, hold on. Are either of them fans of robots? That <laughs> she's into theft. Rides a snowboard. <laughs> Neither of these two are really into robots. work in a law department of an oil company where she worked on legal actions against environmentalists. I need to hire somebody. I guess I don't have a thief. I already have a lawyer. I think, isn't she a lawyer too? She's a... Four million though? I am making cash, but only 392,000. And then that's going to go to hell. When I hire Holly. I'm going to hire Debbie. Mr. President, I need a job and I believe you have an opening for me. If you want someone who can handle everything from organizing a timetable to filing a lawsuit, then I'm your person and I can also handle the occasional legal foot dragging too. You know what? No, I don't need her right now. I'm going to try... I can wait. I can wait on regulate robotics. Forget it. We're just going to. That's the one we're going to do. The one that Ben's doing. Um, for save the journalist. Seems like we need like tough guys for that. I don't know, man. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Let's go to the next month. Wait. Next month is very important for your political career. Are you sure you've made all necessary pre pre preparations are ready to move on? 
No? What? What's happening next? <laughs> what? No! Is it- is it- are we doing, like, the vote on... Oh my god, what items do I have? Oh... Title of Baron. Her Majesty Queen Anne granted you the title of Baron. Sell it to someone or just lord over it? Lord it over the media. I think I need the approval. I need both. I need both approval rating. <laughs> I'm so stressed. Let's wait. Uh. Okay, I sent him on vacation, yeah. Into April 2023. Okay, we're at uh, just about six six mil. Oh, minus 1.8. Are you serious? Mr. President, regrettably, your person's involvement did nothing to help. Clayton, the head of the Coyotes fan club, went berserk after yesterday's match and beat another team's fan with a baseball bat, sending the poor man into a coma. Coyotes' biggest fan now behind bars. How do you like this headline? By the way, most people at first think it is about you. Oh. Ellie, no! <laughs> Why? It's getting worse. Well, hon, the reception for the Vietnam vets was going great. The reporters even relaxed and started swigging champagne. Then all of a sudden, right after we served the noodles, one of the old guys, his name was like Steve or Stan Berkowitz or something. Anyway, he shouted, get down and dove right under the table. The others all reacted right away, and a few seconds later, my whole reception was under the table. Judging from what they're writing in Just DC, Berkowitz had a Vietnam flashback. This is no joke. The press is saying we planned the whole reception just to mess with them. They're calling it the worst reception since the Red Wedding. Game of Thrones reference. I'm watching Game of Thrones again right now. Joanna Rizzuto of Just DC says the North Korean government has announced that Kang Chol Nam was, has died and elections have been held for his position. Kang Chul Nam had not appeared in public for three months, during which time his younger sister, Kang Chul Hee, took his place. She is now the leader of North Korea. The international community is trying to figure out what to expect from Kang Chul Hee. Will she be a force for liberal reform or further despotism? Paul Leroy, freelance journalist, says, will the 20th Amendment be passed by Congress? America will find out very soon. Okay, so I think we already secured the votes. I don't think we have to worry about that. Antonio Buddy Esteba says, Men and women of Congress, remember that this power has been granted to you by the American people. And the American people have chosen the president as their leader. So don't let the American people down, my friends. Had to cough, sorry. The House votes. Colleagues, another historic day has finally arrived. The vote to introduce Amendment 28 to the Constitution. As you know, it takes two-thirds vote of those present, 300 people, for the amendment to pass. Although I believe there's a bit of a wrinkle here. If there are 299 votes in favor, then I, as President of Congress, will be called upon to give my opinion. And my opinion on this matter, my friends, could honestly be just about anything. As I've already mentioned, there is a flaw in the text of the amendment. There's no mention of the vice president. Unfortunately, none of my friends took the trouble to correct this unfortunate omission. So if you feel comfortable that my vote is a foregone conclusion, then think again. I will weigh all the pros and cons and make my decision based on the best interests of the American people who have entrusted me with this high honor. All right, let's vote. Is he trying to say that we need to add him into this to get his vote? I think so. My friends, a stone has been lifted from my shoulders. Today, my fat belly is all I must carry and not the full weight of the decision to adopt this amendment. The results of the vote are 300 in favor, 146 against, and four abstentions. The amendment has been supported by a supermajority in the house. 
I declare the initiative approved. The amendment will now move to the Senate for consideration, and then on a local level to the states. When the amendment has been ratified by 38 states, it will become part of the Constitution. Thank you for this session, which will surely go down in history. But I do not bid you farewell, my friends. I'll come back uh, occasionally to terrorize you with my speeches. All right, first step completed. Buddy, how was that? Did I do a good job of showing off my integrity? If you ask me, all of America is thinking I voted impartially. Tony, are you serious? To be honest, for a moment there, I was afraid that if it came down to you, you might actually vote against. Ellie, what do you take me for? At worst, I just insist they revise the amendment to include the vice president. And then I would have voted yes anyway. Yeah, I was right to be worried. But thank goodness that's all behind us now. And we can move on to the next phase of our plan. Honey, for the next month, please focus on our backlog. I need a little more time so we can focus on the Supreme Court. I realize we're pressed for time, but trust me, soon the judiciary will be ours. And don't forget, we still have the Senate vote coming up. Our friend Dickinson will handle everything there, just like she did last year. You don't even have to watch. I can tell you in advance, 75 votes in favor, 25 against, three quarters, even more than in the house. Ellie, they're gonna call it the establishment genocide. Aren't you afraid to be facing charges in the hag for exterminating corrupt politicians? I'm not worried, Tony. For better or worse, they are indestructible. So we don't have to worry about the Senate, but Ah, I was going to say, we do have to get our ratings up. Uh, Amendment 28 has passed the House of Representatives and will now be considered at the state level. It's too early for its supporters to rejoice just yet and too early for its opponents to give up hope. The country already has one amendment that has failed for centuries to pass this procedure. There's no guarantee that the same fate doesn't await this latest attempt to revise the Constitution, says Joanna Rizzuto of Just DC. Get the support of two-thirds of the House of Representatives. Goal completed. Uh-oh. Police brutality. The whole country is buzzing about the latest police scandal, hun. During a raid on a drug lab, Captain Kirk Douglas, the actor? Who's been on the force for 16 years without so much as a single reprimand, gave a drug dealer a little smack on the back of the head. I wouldn't have gone so easy on him. The prick was making cheap synthetic opioids and selling them at local high schools. And Douglas's daughter is in rehab for the second time because of the stuff. Nobody would ever have found out he hit the guy, but there were cameras set up in the lab. A video of the dealer standing there with his hands up, smiling politely at the cops as they arrest him. It's already all over the internet. Now that amateur chemist lawyer is accusing Douglas of police brutality and get this, torture. I think you should get involved, hun. A few police captains have already said that all the cops at their precincts are going to quit if Douglas actually gets tried for something so insignificant. I know from experience that jurors can sometimes be swayed by public opinion, and he'll get sentenced unfairly. Will we help Douglas? The cop broke the law. Insignificant or no, he has to pay for it. The cops should be loyal to us. We'll show people who makes the laws in this country. Yeah. Oh, I never should have asked you about this, hun. <laughs> it seemed like the press was just waiting to see how you were going to react, hun. Right after we made the announcement, Just DC released a scandalous piece on Douglas. Apparently, he's been covering an Eastern European human trafficking ring for years. Covering up one? They were bringing the poor girls in through a cargo port patrolled by Douglas's department. Now they are accusing us of being in cahoots with dirty cops, the mob, and God only knows who else. I'm just going to lose all the gains that we just got. I hope those freaks, both the drug dealer and the human trafficker, get locked up in the same jail cell. It's all my fault we got mixed up in this awful scandal. I feel so stupid. Can you ever forgive me, hun? Fuck. The president's reaction was predictable. He always makes his decisions based not on morality. True. But on which option will be most beneficial to him at any given moment? That's... She nailed me. That's exactly what I do. But at this particular moment, you can see how quickly things change after we dug up some details about the event. <laughs> I 
buddy, pretty soon kids are gonna come here from every state to roll Easter eggs on the White House lawn. Have some fun and take tons of souvenir pics, buddy. I meant to say this last year, but I never got around to it. And who knows about next year, right? Anyhow, I've always wanted to dress up like the Easter Bunny and give the kitties a day to remember. Not planning on having any of my own anytime soon, so what do you think? This is a bad idea, but fine. Joseph Bompery, a preacher, says, Mr. President, I believe that your people are well-intentioned and pure of heart, but the devil takes many forms, and sometimes we stray from the true path. When this happens, the most important thing is to cleanse our souls of vileness and confess our sins to a servant of the Lord. Preferably, it should be done in a confessional booth. Should we put one in the White House? I promise to confess my sins at least twice a week. No. Ellie! Shelly Shaw called me the other day, hon. She's got a new show. She drinks margaritas with important women, gabbing about success, their personal lives, crap like that. She wants to pay me a million bucks to be on the first episode. She swears up and down that the whole thing is going to be tasteful and scandal-free. I don't really trust her, but I'd love to get back at the old battle axe for humiliating me last year. Also, there's the money. You don't mind if I put Shelly in her place on national television, do you, hon? Wait, is this one of those things where if I say I'm, I'm, I'm saying yes, go or yes, I don't. No, I don't mind. I think yes means go. Yes, go. I hope that was... <laughs> Whatever. Phil Burke, an FBI director, says, Sir, we were expecting Harry White, the guy who leaked the emails of high-ranking U.S. government employees and information about some civilians we've been bugging to be extradited from Argentina today. But White was found dead in his cell yesterday. The Argentinians insist he had a heart attack, but I don't buy it. White had too many secrets and enemies to die of natural causes. Maybe he managed to dig something up on the Argentinian government and paid for it. Should we demand an international investigation into White's death? Yes. Felix, oh, look at all these decisions, man. Felix Carton, National Security Advisor. Sir John Boryovich, the Air Force Chief of Staff, announced at a press conference that North Korea is about to start a nuclear war with South Korea. His main argument was that the leader of North Korea said that sooner or later, there will only be one Korea. But he basically inherited that phrase from his dad, along with the job. Uh, okay. I thought that it was a, a woman that, okay. Fake news sites have been gobbling it up. Sorry, I had to like parse that to make sure it made sense, but I, I don't think it does. Because I think, says, but he basically inherited that phrase from his dad along with the job. But a woman, the guy's sister, the son's sister took over. The guy's daughter. Okay. Anyways, fake news sites have been gobbling it up and doomsday preppers are already looking for empty bunkers to wait out the nuclear war in. Some of them are even coming to blows over it. Don't you think we should publicly deny Boris Borisovich's announcement to stem the panic? Sure. Stacey Chang, head of the Maritime Administration. Mr. President, an American oil tanker ran aground in the Panama Canal. Oh. <laughs> it's completely blocking the hope. A Venezuelan vessel carrying urgent humanitarian aid to Cuba. The fastest way to get the tanker back on the water is to dump some of the oil. That will make her lighter and let her slip back into the canal. True, it'll mess up the environment, but we can clean up pollution. The same can't be said for any Cubans who die without that aid from the Hope. Should we do it? Wow, uh, that's a, this is a tough choice. I would say go for it, save the people, and we'll clean up the pollution. Paul Gordon, a, a cat from Finland, says, no, Undersecretary of State for Public Diplomacy. A video of our online conference with ambassadors in Finland broke the internet, sir. Right in the middle of the talk, a gigantic cat jumped up onto an ambassador's desk. It looked so grumpy, people started joking online that the human slave clearly ruined High Highness's nap with his vapid politicking. People love cats. We should capitalize on that. Should the White House get a cat for important video conferences? Hell yeah! Fergus Bright, trade attaché. 
Mr. President, climate change is caused by carbon dioxide, steam, and methane. We're doing what we can to minimize the first two. But methane, its main supplier is cattle farming. One cow releases about 500 liters of methane into the air every day. We could significantly reduce this number by switching cows to premium feed. Let's make it mandatory for farmers to feed 20% of their herds decent food. Are you in? No. Dang, buddy, I had no idea it was so hard to move around in those costumes. To say nothing of jumping around like a jackrabbit. No wonder I got my paws stuck together and fell on some kid. Eh, it takes okay, but the reporter's man should get a ton of pics of me looming over him in a bunny costume like some kind of pervert. I knew it! Tony! <sighs> Mr. President, after we dump some of the oil from the tanker... Uh, from the tanker stuck in the Panama Canal, we managed to get her back in the water. Thanks to our efforts, the Hope delivered her urgent humanitarian aid in time. They closed the canal and cleaned it up, but they demanded we pay them for all the expenses. And the tree huggers had themselves a little protest. If you ask me, it seems like a small price to pay to save all those lives. I agree! People didn't like- okay, whatever. Yes! We got it back, baby! Felix Carton, National Security Advisor. Sir, in their announcement, your press service listed 10 reasons why a nuclear war between North and South Korea is impossible right now. Everything from the North can't afford it to the North's greatest enemy is internal dissent. Given that the brawls over bunkers have stopped, I'd say even the most diehard preppers have realized how reasonable our arguments are. Damn right. And, oh nice, plus point six. Sir, we demanded an international investigation to the death of Harry White, who died the night before he was supposed to be extradited to the US. The autopsy showed that he really did have a bum ticker. He kept asking for help, but the warden of the Argentinian jail refused to let him see a doctor. Even if his death wasn't intentional, it still represented a violation of international protocol. I looked online and people are saying they appreciate how you value the lives of all people, even criminals. Oh, thank God. I need this. I need this. I was on Shelly Shaw's new show, hon, just as I thought. She didn't bring me on to chat. She started provoking me right out of the gate. I think I did pretty well. I even managed to slam the bitch a couple of times. That's when I realized why they serve everyone margaritas on that show. I got a little tipsy. I ended up calling her a skank. For some reason, I said you were a demon in the sack. I'm scared to look at the comments, but Tony said I was on fire. Everybody thinks so. That's pretty huge. Prepare the presentation and steal the FBI reports. Okay, we might have to hire that thief now. Prepare the presentation is very important, though. It's uh, time sensitive. Help Tony successfully address the watchdog group. Uh, Paul Gordon, Under Secretary of State for Public Diplomacy, says, Sir, later this month, Vice President Stava will be addressing the African American Affairs Committee in Arizona. We've been planning this event for a while and prepared several drafts for him. But in the last moment, Mr. Staba claimed all of it was nonsense. Of course he did. <laughs> Had nothing to do with his public image and offended his common sense. Tossed the prince out of the window and slammed the door in our face. When we allowed him to prepare a speech last time, he had to apologize before 19 different organizations he managed to offend. The entire address took only nine minutes. I know he is speaking from the heart, but this time he will be talking three times as long. How about you send a member of your team to help the vice president? He's refusing to cooperate with the boring pen pushers. Bland as a vegan burger. That's his opinion of my top specialist. Vice President knows to keep the public engaged, but the upcoming address will require preparations and gravitas. We need an inspiring speech, a video presentation, preferably with advanced special effects. Additionally, a lawyer will have to double check the content. Leave no ground for potential lawsuits. Have you got any such experts in mind? Okay, so we can send Clint. The other ones suck. <laughs> Inspiring speech, video presentation, special effects, and a lawyer.
Are any of the new people... I guess I'll try Clint, Ben, and Troy. Boss, my grandfather died. We were very close, and it'll be mourning him all month. Don't expect me at work. Okay. I guess we're done for the month then. <laughs> There's literally, I got no one that can work. Oh. I might have just have to like not do these two. I, w I would love to do save the journalists though. I just don't think I have the people to do it. Should I? I'm thinking um, there's. There's this I could lobby for. I think I'm going to do that because I need the approval rating. Okay. We're just we're just rolling through gradually losing our approval and money. <laughs> 